So I've had a few people asking me um, for a tutorial on making these uh, lavalier microphone necklaces. So I've got to make another one and I thought, well, might as well film it. So to start off, obviously we've got um, your lav. I'm using the uh, Rode Invisilav uh, Plus because it's got a nice small sort of microphone on it and the audio quality is pretty good. Um, I'm actually wearing the first one I made to record the sound for this, so um, one of them. Then uh, the cage or the sort of centerpiece for the necklace. These are just some um, natural fibre balls that came off a bird's toy. And I figured, you know, they're sort of hollow in the centre, plenty of room to get some uh, wind protection in the middle and uh, pass everything through. Um, I didn't want them that colour, obviously, so I just painted one black. I used a leather dye, but I guess a spray paint would work or just a craft paint of some sort. Probably don't want something that's going to stain your talent skin black, but, um, or clothing, you know. Um, so, yeah, I know the leather dye is pretty good for that. Uh, then we've got some foam insulation that's just like an open cell foam. Uh, I actually cut this off the back end of one of my uh, Rode video mic um, foams that sit inside the dead cats. And then a couple of lengths of jewellery chain. What have we got there? Maybe eight centimetres just with no end on it. That one there. And then this one here. I just, if that's going to focus. Let's tap on there. There you go. Um, that one there is, uh, it's just got sort of a jewellery clasp which I attached, pre attached to the end. And that one's probably all up going to be five centimetres long. So the other thing uh, I'm going to use in this is uh, some dual wall adhesive heat shrink. So your electrical supply stores should be able to do that. Um, I've just got a sort of four pieces of that uh, in whatever size that is. Um, let me see, four mil. And then I've got a longer piece um, in six mil. This is just to attach the adapter um, for the road, but you probably wouldn't need that depending on what system you're using. Lastly, uh, I've got some lengths of uh, two millimeter thick leather, it's sort of like a shoelace, I guess, or leather cord. Um, almost all of this stuff came off my local craft supply store. So um, I think I've got about $4 worth here. So this cord here, I've got two lengths at 75 centimeters and one length at 35 centimeters. Oh, sorry. Uh, Two lengths at 70, one at 35. So that gives us um, obviously what's going to make the actual necklace. And then uh, just for decoration, I got two of those. Now, depending on how you decide to go with yours, uh, it'll probably be a bit different um, for the order of assembly. But just from the first one, I learned that, you know, um, because I'm not going to pass this through the center of stuff the jack end, I need to start off by putting uh, a few of these heat shrinks over here. And I do need a bit of easing open. So, you know, this stuff will, uh, the jewel wall stuff's good. It'll stretch and re-shrink pretty well. So I just sort of give it a slight stretch with a pair of long nose pliers like that. So I'm gonna need Two of these. And my little bit of decoration as well. So that can just go down onto the end there like that. So now to start sort of making this, um, 
I'm going to just grab all of my lengths of lacing and sort of find, and that should be the center or pretty close to the middle. And then I'm going to pop a heat shrink over the top of them all like this. pull it right down to the middle. Let's check that we're roughly the same length. And yep, I'm happy with that. And then heat gun lighter, it'll all do the same thing. We're just gonna shrink that down. So this dual wall heat shrink actually has um, hot glue inside it, which is really good. So we're sort of hot gluing um, those ends in there. There we go. I'll find those two ends there. I'm going to pass them through and then we're just going to pull the microphone one back until it's sitting pretty much. In the spot that we want it. And yep, I'm happy with that. There we go. So that's the basis. So three ends on that side, three ends, and you can see that uh, the microphone over there, or the jack, sorry, and a bit of heat shrink there. So next up, is to find your end that only has the leather. And we're going to start assembling this. So this ball here had a couple of original holes, but it doesn't really matter. As long as you're sort of going to pass through it fairly central. Now obviously there's no way so I'm going to pass three of these through there and keep them neat and tidy. So I'm just going to take a very little bit of this heat shrink and pop it over there. And pull it right down to the end. And trim those tags up because that's going to make it a lot easier to get through um, the center of this. Now it's just a case of deciding which way we want to go. And I like the look of there. Put in the bigger hole on the side with the microphone because that's going to make it a lot easier to get it all inside. And just want something pokey. That'll do. That's the one there. There we go. Bit of tape probably would have worked as well. So now I'm just going to run this down to there and we're going to make some room So can't really see, but the head of that microphone is sitting sort of somewhere towards the center of that ball. So there we go, three on that side, two and the cord on that side. Um, next thing we're gonna do here is stop braiding. So for the braiding, does help to have a bit of tension. So I'm just gonna use that as a weight. 
and then it's just a simple plait. You've got kids and you've got daughters. A fairly good chance that you'll know how to do this. But essentially it's just passing the left and then the right string over the center. So when you're getting towards the end, got maybe an inch, inch and a bit left, um, on the side that doesn't have the lav, I'm just gonna thread the end of my jewelry chain through the center of that weave. And then I'm gonna um, just continue just a little bit further. So now that's sort of locked in there. And then I'm going to drop the whole entire lot through this piece of heat shrink. So a bit on the fiddly side. Yep, so I'm going to probably ease this out a bit as well. 3% on the battery. Right, so we've got that threaded through with the chain end. And just get that nice and hot. And then we're going to just trim off those ends there. A bit more heat. Pepsi, what's up? Brad's not happy that I'm destroying his toy, I think. Um, so, yep. So that's your braid for one side. Um, and now it's just a case of moving on and braiding the other side. This is obviously the side with the um, cord. So, yeah, let's my cameras. There we go. And away we go. So, same deal. Just Alternating between crossing the right over the center strand and the left on the right. So the side with the um, lav cord in it is a little harder to braid. That's because there's not quite as much flex, so I just keep keep sort of playing with it, trying to adjust it, you know. Keep it fairly straight. Probably doesn't help, it's fairly cool today. If your cord is warm, it'd probably be a lot easier. It does help once in a while to just sort of run your fingers down and put a bit of tension on it. So it does help to just sort of get a rough idea of how you're going with symmetry. You know, so we're a little bit shorter this side, but that's okay. As we do have a little bit further to go. Now we're to the point that we want to pop this in. This is our clasp bend of the chain. And slip that on there. Um, Yeah, I'll try and give it a couple more wraps as well. Have a look, yep, we're sitting fairly central. So, I thought I'd get ahead of the game on this one and actually pop the clasp on the chain, but I've just realized I've snooped myself because um, 
I need to pass this through all of that stuff and it is not going to fit. So I'm just going to open that last link up. Drop that out. And then we should have that bit of heat shrink right down the bottom here. Oh, there it comes. And we're just going to open that up a bit as well. sort of making sure we get it hot enough to shrink and activate the glue but not obviously we don't want to cook the the cable on the lab so there we go that's in there we just got a couple of unsightly tag ends there if you've got a long tag end just be really careful you don't trim your lab wire because that'll be kind of uh, game over Open that up ever so slightly and I'll pop the clasp back in. Now I don't trust these not to sort of fall open at some point, especially if they get pulled on. So I'll probably back that up with a tiny dot of hot glue or some super glue maybe. Just gonna trim that out a little bit shorter. Just keep it neat and tidy. And there we go. So down to here. There we're just gonna push on neatly. I'll just backfill those holes with some hot glue as well. And then we'll see if we've snookered ourselves this side. And so we probably have. So last thing now is just to get some foam padding in there. Basically, the way I did that was I just sort of trimmed this foam up. And anywhere I could see holes. And sort of shove it in. This bit was, I guess, trial and error. Um, because obviously you don't want too much or it's going to get really muffled, but I just sort of had a look at the internal volume and tried to get a cut a bit of foam that sort of had the same size and then you know that it's going to be like not too tight, but you'll still get some of the um, a shock absorption and wind cancellation. By having this packed in there. 
really hard to see the lights not the greatest but it's about as much as I put in the other one so that's pretty much it done So I'm pretty happy with that. So yep, all I've got left to do is just a bit of hot glue um, in those little parts there. And then yeah. That'll just stop them banging around against it. And she's done. <laughs>